The mainstream media has been on board with this anti-Russia propaganda campaign for months now, but today we're going to take a look specifically at the Washington Post, because even though they had one of their most crucial stories disproven, they still continue to promote the same narrative. And in this video, we're going to show you why it is absolutely ridiculous. When the Washington Post published a story titled, Russian Propaganda Effort Helps Spread Fake News During Election, experts say, on November 20th, it acted as if it had found the perfect link between Russia and fake news, all backed up by citing experts. Now, one of the biggest problems with this story is that its main source was this mysterious anonymous group called Propernot. The Post referred to Propernot as, quote, a group that insists on public anonymity. This mysterious group claimed to have created the master list of over 200 websites that were promoting Russian propaganda in the form of fake news. While most of the mainstream media took this list as the great gospel, a lot of the websites that were mentioned on it, including wearechange.org, fought back against the report questioning the validity of proper not. As a result, the Post added an editor's note to the top of the story in which it claimed that the Washington Post, quote, does not itself vouch for the validity of proper not's findings regarding any individual media outlet, nor did the article purport to do so. Since the publication of the Post story, proper not has removed some sites from its list. Now, one might think that if a public Publication's credibility was called into question based on the fact that they used a cheap, anonymous, unverified source in order to push an anti-propaganda hit piece that was actually the real propaganda, then maybe they would take a break from pushing that same propaganda, right? Yet that campaign continued this week. The Washington Post published a story yesterday targeting Russia Today, titled, How Ed Schultz Transformed from MSNBC Lefty to the American Face of Moscow Media. The piece looks at how Schultz went from being a fan of Hillary Clinton and calling Donald Trump a racist on MSNBC to criticizing reports on Russian hacking and US involvement in Aleppo on RT America. The main problem with this story is that while it points out all of the changes that Schultz made, it acts as if those changes were directly ordered by the Kremlin. It also acts as if the things Schultz did while at MSNBC, such as praising Hillary Clinton and criticizing Donald Trump, as if those made him a model citizen. How dare he change his workplace and his views now? The story also completely ignores the fact that this character change happens all the time. What about all of the times mainstream media networks hire former lobbyists and politicians? What about when disgraced Trump campaign manager Corey Lewandowski was hired by CNN? Instead of criticizing the move, the Washington Post published a story on what a great thing it was for CNN. They said that CNN's reporters thought Corey Lewandowski would be the perfect asset for the network's campaign coverage. The Washington Post published another story about Russia yesterday by columnist Ann Applebaum, titled, I was a victim of a Russian smear campaign. I understand the power of fake news. The most glaring problem with this story can be found in the first two sentences. Quote, we were told in June that the Democratic National Committee had been hacked by Russians. We were told in October that material subsequently passed on to WikiLeaks came from the same source. They were told? By whom? The story links to another Washington Post article from June. Russian government hackers penetrated DNC, stole opposition research on Trump. The problem with this story is that it cites committee officials and security experts who responded to the breach. The main problem here is that these so-called security experts, well, they're anonymous. And that raises a lot of questions about exactly what the Washington Post is doing by using vague anonymous sources in order to justify certain ideas and claims. So let's look at this term security expert. It really makes you wonder if there was a group of security experts who finally proved a link between Russia and the United States presidential elections. Well, don't you think our government would be so proud of them that they would be parading them around and practically giving them presidential medals of freedom for their work? I mean, the Obama administration has been obsessed with proving that Russia wants to have a hand in our presidential elections. And then that brings us 
back to Russia. Both President Putin and other Russian officials have denied having any involvement in this hack. But if they were involved in the hack, don't you think that they would be a little bit proud of it? I mean, come on, not only did they hack into the DNC's email systems, but they were able to influence public opinion to the point where Donald Trump won the election and Hillary Clinton was defeated. And then that brings us back to the United States. Because if the Russians were really able to hack into our email systems and if they were really able to use our media to influence public opinion, well, that's pretty embarrassing. Especially for President Obama who was nominated by the party that was clearly too dumb to keep their own email systems secure, therefore they were susceptible to Russian hackers, if you believe his story. Now, what we really have to look at here is the political motive behind all of it. See, if President Obama was truly embarrassed about this hacking, he wouldn't be going around talking about it. And if the Washington Post actually verified their sources, they wouldn't be coming out with the stories that we've seen in the last month. So it's important to remember, no matter what, there is a serious political motive, both behind what the President Obama is saying and behind what the Washington Post is publishing.